When capacitors are connected to DC or pulse DC sources, they behave in a very predictable manner. In this video, we'll examine this behavior and discuss some key concepts that will help you understand circuits that use capacitors for timing and pulse width modulation applications. Here's an RC circuit connected to a pulse generator. R1 in the circuit is a 1 kilo ohm and C1 is 0.1 microfarads. The ammeter V cur 1 will measure the current in the circuit. When we simulate the circuit, we see the following waveforms. Let's examine each in detail and discuss what's going on. The voltage source has been set to provide a pulse that varies from 0 to 5 volts and remains at 5 volts for 0 0.001 of a second, or 1 millisecond. During the 1 millisecond on time, the voltage applied by the source is a constant 5 volts. Capacitors under DC conditions behave as a short circuit at first. We've replaced C1 in the circuit with a wire because capacitors under DC conditions behave as a short circuit at first. This means at time T0, the instant the pulse is applied across the circuit, the current in the circuit will immediately jump to its maximum value of V applied divided by R1 or VR1 divided by R1 or 5 volts divided by 1 kilo ohm or 5 milliamps. And our simulation confirms this. At T0, current is 5 milliamps. However, we also see that immediately after rising to 5 milliamps, current begins to decay and get smaller until it reaches 0 at T1. Capacitors behave as open circuits once fully charged. And this has to happen as capacitors are two conductors separated by an insulator. From T0 to T1, we say the capacitor is charging, or filling up with electrons, or electric charge. Let's look at the voltage across the capacitor as it charges. Remember, capacitors under DC conditions behave as a short circuit at first. And again, we've replaced the capacitor with a wire. VC at time T0 will equal IC times R capacitor. We know that at T0 the current is 5 milliamps, and the cap is behaving as a short circuit at this instant. Short circuits have a resistance of 0 ohms, so Vc at time 0 equals 5 milliamps times 0 ohms, which equals 0 volts. As the capacitor charges with current from T0 to T1, the voltage across the capacitor increases until it equals the applied voltage of 5 volts. While charging, the voltage across the capacitor increases, leaving less voltage across R1 until... VR1 equals 0 volts, and VC1 equals the applied voltage of 5 volts. And we know from earlier that current is 0 amps at T1, and Ohm's law confirms this as IT will equal VR1 divided by 1 kilo ohm or 0 volts divided by 1 kilo ohm or 0 amps. Let's look at all three waveforms and review what's happening. You can think of capacitors behaving like a balloon being blown up. At first, it's easy, and lots of air easily flows into the balloon. Then it begins to get harder to put air into the balloon, because the pressure in the balloon is pushing back the pressure trying to push air into it, and the net result is airflow starts decreasing. Until finally, the air pressure applied is equal to the pressure in the balloon, and airflow stops. Relating this to our capacitor circuit, at T0, the capacitors act as a short circuit and the maximum current flows limited only by the resistance of R1. From T0 to T1, the capacitor charges until it's fully charged, and when fully charged, no more current flows. As you may have guessed, if we increase the resistance, we slow down the rate of flow of current into the capacitor, and it will take longer to charge the capacitor. Fusion's been simulating our circuit with a 1 kilo ohm resistance and a 0.1 microfarad capacitance. If we increase R1 to 2 kilo ohms, as expected, we see it takes longer for the capacitor to fully charge. If we make R even larger, say 8.2 kilo ohms, the capacitor doesn't have enough time to even fully charge and only reaches about 3.3 volts until the applied power switches to 0 volts and begins discharging the capacitor. The time it takes a capacitor to charge is related to its time constant. 
The time constant for an RC charging or discharging circuit is R times C. And in the math formula that describes this curve, it's assigned the Greek letter tau. After one tau, the voltage across the capacitor will have reached 63% of its final value. And after five tau, we say the curve has reached its final value. Similarly, after one tau, current will have decayed from its maximum value by 63%. Or, stated another way, after one tau, current will be 37% of its maximum value. And after five tau, current will decay to zero. You may have noticed that current immediately goes negative when the applied voltage drops to zero at T3. And that's because the capacitor is now supplying current into the circuit, and current is flowing back to the supply. Remember, the supply is at zero volts, the same voltage as ground, and current will flow from a higher electrical pressure, or voltage, to a lower voltage. If you're interested in the math, VC follows an exponential growth curve, and IC follows an exponential decay curve. Let's look at some RC timing circuits that take advantage of the behavior of capacitors under DC conditions. Clock circuits take advantage of RC charge and discharge characteristics to produce square wave outputs. This is a 555 timer A-stable circuit. Notice the charge and discharge across VC1. This is another common RC A-stable clock circuit. Again, we see the charge and discharge of capacitor C1 in the circuit. Let's go back to our RC circuit and look at another application for capacitors, and that is to find the average of a pulse width modulated signal. A pulse width modulated signal is a digital representation of an analog signal. An RC circuit will recover the average value. Let's make R1 even larger, and VC will settle around the average value of the pulse. The average value of the pulse is equal to the pulse duty cycle time times the pulse's DC value. Duty cycle is the ratio of on time to pulse period, or T on divided by T on plus T off times V pulse. In this case, one volt. The charging and discharging can be seen here, but we need to look at a lot more pulses if we wish to see VC settle around the average value of the pulses. And when we increase the simulation to 100 milliseconds, we see that VC eventually settles around the average value of the pulses. If we were to increase T on of the pulses, we would see the average value recovered increase. And here we've simulated the T on being 2 milliseconds, and we see that VC rises to 2 volts. Let's review. Capacitors under DC conditions behave as a short circuit at first when being charged, and then block DC current once fully charged. Similar to a balloon being blown up, at first it's very easy and there is a lot of airflow. Then as the balloon is blown up, the air pressure in the balloon starts pushing against the air pressure trying to blow it up and airflow becomes less and less until the air pressure pushing back equals the air pressure applied and airflow stops. The time constant tau controls the charge or discharge curve. Tau equals R times C. After one time constant, or tau, voltage rises to 63% of its final value, and current decays to 37% of its maximum or initial value. When voltage drops to zero, the capacitor supplies the current in the circuit, and the current flows back to the source. If you like this video and want to see more, please say so in the comments section. Thank you.